So this week I got to sit down and check out Murder in the Front Row. It's a film about the San Francisco Bay Area metal scene in the 80s that gave birth to the thrash and speed metal movement. And it's a companion to the book of the same name. To be honest, I was a little skeptical going in on this one. Uh, I came up in the thrash and speed metal scene and I've seen just about every documentary there is on it. And they usually follow the same route. They talk about a couple of the bands incidentally, they introduce Metallica, they talk about Dave Mustaine for a minute, and then it becomes Metallica documentary number 9,000. Thankfully on this one, it's not the case. What I really appreciated here was how much time they gave to showing the early influence of Exodus and how they could be arguably said to be the pioneers of the scene. Uh, obviously with Kirk Hammett leaving and joining Metallica, you see it, the torch being passed right there, but his prior history with Exodus really kind of set the scene. The amount of photographs and backstory are really what make the film interesting and kind of special and different from a lot of what you've probably seen so far. There are photos and pieces that you just don't see all over the web. We keep seeing the same ones, and that's usually an annoying part of a lot of these documentaries, too, is they use the same found footage or the same photos that we've seen over and over, and there's a lot of fresh material. But what really sets this apart, and I think makes it genuinely a study about how this movement happened, and there's even some lessons to be learned about modern music and why you're not seeing scenes like this come up anymore, is the fact that they spent so much time showing that a scene isn't just the musicians. It's the club owners. It's the girlfriends, even. It's there are characters in the scene that are almost, if not as well known as members of the band, that there's a culture and a community that fosters a certain form of music, and that's shown here. And that's something that is totally original to this film, I think, and that's what's most worth looking into. There's really notable pieces, like showing the owner of Ruthie's Inn, which was basically ground zero for the Bay Area movement, and he was a jazz band which makes it really unlikely that he would see value in a movement like this, but without him, who knows what would have happened or if this would have gotten off the ground. You have other people in the scene like Debbie Abono, who was uh, basically a mother to a lot of these kids coming up who were very troubled, and she helped a lot of these bands find their way or have a safe refuge. She went as far as doing things like giving Larry Lalonde from Primus and previously Possessed, money to get his first guitar lessons. She would provide gear if bands needed it. She would give them a place to stay. So it shows all the auxiliary people that don't normally get the kind of recognition that they really honestly deserve in developing a music scene, and how some people who are just fans of the music or just really characters who develop that culture the music is a reflection of the culture, and if you don't understand the culture, you don't really get how this music came about. Also covered here are the important pieces of original vocalist Paul Bailoff from Exodus and Metallica bassist Cliff Burton and their passings. A lot of times this gets capitalized on in these really overwrought kind of sections, but I felt like this was handled with the due respect and acknowledgement to their place but it wasn't capitalized on or used to sell the film, which I thought was another really good point and much appreciated. There's a lot of great humor in here, too, and some fantastic backstories, and I think that's what at least viewers like me want to see going into something like this, are the things you didn't get to hear about. And the stories behind some of these early photographs, ones that really haven't been released before this book was out, as far as I know, it really gives an amazing insight and humanizes what a lot of us have come to know as, you know, the gods of the thrash scene. Without having to try too hard as well, it shows the different character of the different bands coming up. The difference between the personalities of the guys in Slayer versus Exodus versus Metallica. For me, I think that the best part about the film and something that I hope everybody will draw from it that gets to see it is how it reflects on modern music and why we don't really have scenes like this anymore. And it's because it's an in-person culture of people relying on each other 
and a reaction to society at the time. There's an intensity and a reason why these bands are still relevant. You just don't see scenes that are full of people that are really kind of living it. I mean, it, these weren't necessarily the most healthy habits to have, but it was an incredibly aggressive, oftentimes even violent group of people who were trying to forge something new out of frustration with this energy that they had and just not being happy with what they were being presented with in life or in music. When you look at modern metal and you see bands like Testament, which were a part of the scene and covered in the film, putting out albums now that are still relevant, it shows why. That they came up in a scene where you weren't going to get famous or you didn't think so. That you were doing it purely out of dedication to this culture and trying to forge a new sound that you didn't think was probably going to go much further than the Bay Area. There's a huge lesson to be learned by going back and seeing the entire culture laid out like this for, I think, younger and modern metal bands and fans, seeing the level of intensity that was 24-7 with these guys. It wasn't just metal was a pursuit or a cool thing. It was a way of life. But it took that to forge something that was more intense than anybody had ever heard at the time and is still the founding kernel for all the extreme metal that people are doing now. We really haven't progressed so far beyond it. Production, yeah, and a couple other things borrowed and some pieces as death metal developed, but even there you can see the seeds of it with bands like Possessed, arguably the first death metal band, which also came out of the same scene. So without giving too much of this away, and leaving some surprises in and some great humorous pieces too. I definitely recommend checking it out. It's available on Amazon. You can get the DVD. I'm going to put some links down below to check it out. But if you're a fan of metal, period, I think it's kind of essential viewing on this one. You really see what it takes to come up and the level of dedication to create something that's going to push things forward and to step up to the next level of intensity and aggression. And we haven't seen that in a very long time to the amount that was brought forward by this movement. I think a great job was done by everybody, balancing humor and sentiment and history and just a pleasing multimedia experience. So check it out. Again, links down below. Congratulations to everybody involved with the film. I think it's a fantastic work, and I'm probably going to wind up watching it again here shortly. So thanks for checking it out, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you